Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Atomic Salt Live Show. This is the show where we're going to discuss everything in the tabletop hobby world that happened this week. I am Wild Chevy, and as always, I'm joined by Casey. Casey, how are you this week? I'm super. <laughs> no, I'm doing pretty good. Here's, you know, it's a it's a nice Sunday evening. I got my paint set up. Uh, had a good week, so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm doing really good. All right, so tell us, what did you do this week in the, in the tabletop hobby world? So I got a little bit of painting done this week. Not, not as much as I would have liked, but at the same time, I I was taking a few nights off. So uh, first of all, I got Dracios done here. It's it's not great, but uh, he's got all of his colors on. He's got a couple layers of highlights done and uh he's not amazing but i would call him tabletop ready that's all you need to be right yep so he's done uh celia's done and i've i got most of the colors i'm going to be doing some final highlights on the on the dactyl tonight and uh hopefully try and get to the the chandra spec ops too so if i can wrap these two up here in the next night or so then I uh, should just have a few little touch-up pieces on all of these and, you know, finish up their bases and call them done. Nice. So I did that, and then uh, I also uh, had my first RPG, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So Anything else? I think that's about it. So it doesn't sound like much, but it was it was a decently full week for me. Well, that's good. What did you do this week? Uh, let's see. I let's see. Did I do any gaming? No. Uh, like life caught up with people, so I wasn't able to get any gaming for the league that I've been worth doing. Uh, have been painting, uh, as you can see. I've got my my great knights. I went and. Bust out the airbrush, so I've got all my green knights in my uh, LVO forests, all shiny metal right now. And then I've got my blood angels all all red. So, so they are they are at the the first point of uh, painting right now. Cool. So were you able to? It's kind of an unusual combination you've got going on here with the Grey Knights and the Blood Angels. Have uh, have you had a chance to try them out at all, or, or see how they work for you? Yeah, I actually uh, we had there was a tournament in the local area. Oh, well, not local. I had to drive an hour to get there. Um, there was an LVO practice tournament this weekend. There was uh, twenty two participants. Hey, that's that's quite a bit. Yeah, it made for a uh, very sweltering story <laughs> but uh yeah uh saw some some folks from the gladiator games uh our good buddies darren and chad were there yeah yeah so it was a nice turnout how uh how did you do uh i i lost last place <laughs> oh man that's a bummer uh yeah uh so uh i went oh uh, i had two losses and one win and, and i am finding out that in the current uh current way the 40k plays it's hard to make an all comers list everybody yeah. ha everybody's got that guy uh type of list you know what? When you're playing in the ITC or an ITC type game, then yeah, I mean the people who are playing in that are there to win. Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't have fun and you can't make friends there, but it's kind of no holds barred. Yeah, and I was talking to the the TO, and he's like, "Yeah, the the two codexes I chose 
are the less are are some of the least competitive now. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't mean to be mean to you, but <laughs> Blood Angels and Grey Knights are considered to be kind of sucky right now. Yeah, at I mean, least the way that you're you're playing them. Oh, well, I think just in general. But well, it, Darren Darren took all Blood Angels, and he I think he yeah. did upper middle of the pack. Yeah, that's it's getting to the point where it's a pay to win type of situation. Because if you have the money to buy, like or like Darren's got, was it ten drop pods? Yes. Well, it depends on the list. I think I've seen him field upward of fifteen. So yeah, that's a a lot of a uh, a lot of money just on on drop the drop pods themselves. That's about four uh, four hundred bucks. So if you so it's getting to the point where it's becoming very hard to take an all covers. My first round, we went to seven turns. I played against Necrons, and I was tabled on turn seven. Which, you know, that's not bad. I mean, to go all the way to turn seven and then to be tabled, that's that's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, turn seven is basically saying you were there for the whole game. Yeah. It was, and it, it was I rough. Mean, turn seven, I mean, let's be honest, we've all been there. Nobody has a whole lot of stuff kicking around the board at turn seven. So, Yeah, yeah it was... One of those, it just, uh, I wasn't getting the primary mission. I was winning on secondaries about uh, turn five. But then it was, I, I, got, I kept uh, rolling mission, uh, the Maelstroms that were, uh, I couldn't grab. Mm. And, then, and then reanimation protocols. I, I would try to take down uh, troops and it was just not. They were just not uh, surviving. And then there was a, a shard there, and it pretty much tore through all my death company. Yeah, a, a, San, a Satan shard is is pretty nasty. Yeah. I, I got tar pitted, and then it came in and just said, hey, I want to play. Whew, yep, that is, the, the way, that is not the way you deal with them. I mean, the way you deal with the Satan is is pretty much with what they call trash fire. You know, you just you spam so many shots at him that he he can't make all of his saves. Yep, you uh, shoot or forget. Yep, yeah, and you you do you have to commit to him. So, so that was a lesson learned there. Uh, so it was not, so I got a zero in first first round. Second round went up against uh, Dark Angels. Uh, got, uh -oh. got, another, got another loss there. Uh, he was playing uh, Black Knights and Raven, the Ravenwing. Uh, yeah, Black yep. Knights and Ravenwing formation. Yeah. Yeah. So this is that was probably. I mean, without seeing what he's actually running, that's probably a variation of the list that swept Nova. Uh, it's kind of no, funny because it's, it's not a noble list because this was just uh, pure um, dark angels. This was pure dark angels. Yeah. There was a, a noble list there. Somebody did have the dark angel uh, librarian conclave with puppies, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not sure how he placed. I think he he did not get the win. I know that. I'm guessing it's because he didn't go for objectives. You know, that's the thing with the Death Star list. is It does a few things well, and it does a few other things not very well. Now, you can overcome the limitations of that list. You know, the one is your very low model count. Uh, or I should say unit count. But uh, but you you have to have some experience with that list and know how to play it. I'm not saying I do. Yeah. I'm just saying uh, you can tell when a person is net listing 
by how how well they they play that list of theirs. I mean that I mean the list by itself is probably enough to take you mid tier, but you have to understand what it's doing and how to get the most out of it. Otherwise, you'll never do much more than than mid tier oh, with with yeah, any like list. Said, it's a Death Star, but yeah, like, like you're saying, it's you have to also play the, the missions. Very you true. Those, and you have to get those secondaries because it's all about points at the end. It's not about wrecking face. It's about how many ob objectives are you holding at the end of the, the tournament. Yes, and that's one of the things that I like about ITC missions is that they're very good about making sure that it isn't just a, a face wrecking mission. You know, all of their missions. And I mean, there are some, but most of their missions you have to you have to score points. And just killing things will not get you there. So, so that, that was a that was round two. I got tabled on uh, turn three, so wasn't wasn't having a happy day. <laughs> okay, so then uh, what was your last match? Last match was against a Tau player. Uh, well, he, you're just screwed then, aren't you? Uh, no, well, because when you when you have zero points and you're going to uh, round three, you're matched up with somebody with zero points or or higher. He had one point coming to, into round three. So you guys were racing for the bottom, huh? Yep. And he was playing. Uh, he was he's proxying the one of the four drilled uh, suits. The one with the flamers. Oh, uh, the Yavara? Yavara, yeah. And then uh, it was all troops out in the open. Which then my, my list, uh, <laughs> I know exactly what my list uh, can go up against. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so my list is great for our for lower tier uh, people. Yeah, that... Whew. You are the wrong army for... I mean, Grey Knights in general are just a bad matchup for a Yavara. Because the, the Yavara does a few nice things, but it's not that... Honestly, it's not that amazing. Yeah, it, and uh, it goes down... Uh, when, when you go into co close combat and and it breaks, it goes, goes far off the table. Uh, yeah, because it's got a jet pack on it, or a jump pack, or whatever we have. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, that, that, that game, my Dread Knight um, was, was v, VP, because I think he survived, uh, I think, like, 27 close combat attacks. Wow. Yeah, he was uh, he was getting some. Yep. So yeah, that was uh, I, I tabled that I tabled my opponent there on round three. But like I said, it was it was more so I I lost last place for myself with that. Well, so you didn't even take last. I mean, if if you're gonna go for the bottom, man, go go all out. So yeah, that was uh, my tournament experience. Okay, uh, well, uh, how did uh, Chad with his nids? I'm always interested to see how his bugs do. I don't know. Like, uh, finally, it was a a late late uh, starting game because uh, we had people coming in late. Um, so it was. I ended my match at seven o'clock. And the wow. dice, dice down was going to be at eight o'clock, and I was looking at an uh, hour drive back. Yikes! You guys, <laughs> you were playing till late. So what time like, did you get started? Uh, it was uh, start time was eleven o'clock on the the sign up, but it didn't get going till like eleven thirty. So yeah, it was very. Very exhausting day yesterday.
but let's be honest. Have you ever been to a tournament where they did not start either start late or end late? Uh, nope. Yep, because I know I haven't. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was that. And so speaking of Tao, what did you think of them? I mean, you're this I, is probably one of the last matchups you're ever going to play against that that version of Tau. Well, I mean, Tau were... Uh, Tau were a uh, powerhouse uh, when they were able to team up with uh, Eldar. So we'll see how this True. new codex comes out. I, I've heard I heard some people um, just... Not, they, they wanted to see more from the new stuff. That's always the case. You, you wanted what to be... Mean? What do you mean they wanted to see more? Well, like the Stormbreaker or whatever. They're like, they're like, oh yeah, it's cool. It's got the rule of cool, but like all, well, if you put down the the spikes, you can't <laughs> you can't do anything against uh, a drop pod list because then you have to wait a turn to before you can do a stomp. Well. No, because you can't do stops once you put down the spikes. Yeah. Yep. The uh, uh, yeah, nurge. That uh, that the ghost kill I think will be a different story. I think you're gonna have. I think you're gonna see a lot of them, and I think that they're going to be useful. Like nobody's ever gonna be afraid of them. But they're just going to be one of those really annoying units to displace. And they're always going to be kicking around. You know, so they'll shoot pretty well. You know, being monstrous creatures, they'll do okay in close combat. You know, and they'll be plenty maneuverable. I'm just wondering if, because, I mean, being an old-time, old, old salt uh, player... I've seen like what GW has done to other old, older kits. So I it is uh I mean they're bringing out new kits. So I they want to keep selling the old kits. I mean, are they going to nerf the Riptide to uh, to sell the new kits? You know, that's a that's a great question, and I I want to be optimistic. But honestly, I believe that the answer is yes. We're going to see a, a nerf on the Riptide. One, because the Riptide was, we'll say, well, well priced for what you got out of it. I won't say that it was underpriced. It was just very points effective. You know, it, it wasn't abusive. Because once you started putting all the goodies on, you were, you were taking up a serious chunk of your list. Yeah. However... A, a Riptide is armor 2, or has a 2 plus armor save. And even the Storm Surge that we've seen is armor 3. And so I believe that we'll probably see all the stats stay the same. We might even see the points stay the same. But I think that we're going to see... Uh, its armor value reduced to three, which I don't know. You see something that big, you kind of expect it to be armor too, but eh, whatever. We're we're Zeno, so we can't have anything nice for long, <laughs> unless unless we're Eldar. But I mean, you guys are getting a lot of new kits. You know we are, and there's um. There's some really interesting things with those new kits too. Have you seen the new uh, the new Storm Surge or the the sorry? There's the breakers. Our, the the tidebreaker wall. Oh yeah, the the terrain kit that is uh, no longer available. <laughs> yeah, it sold out within minutes. Well, that's the first time GW has actually ever sold Xenos terrain. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> no, it, I mean, it, I haven't seen the rules yet. Uh, 
But I mean, it looks cool. It's got that rule of cool. Uh, does it move? Does it float? It does. So, uh, Bell of Lost Souls has some has some leaked rules. So, I mean, granted, it's not official. So, take it with a grain of salt. But it is able to move six inches every movement phase, and you're basically allowed to put as many guys on there as will fit. Uh, however, and the and those guys are able to uh, shoot as if they didn't move. However, if they are on the, sh we'll just call it the shield wall. Uh, if they were on the shield wall when it moved, they will not be able to move themselves during the movement phase. So uh, it's not quite like a transport. So they can move six inches, uh, and there's three different segments to it. Um, the most obvious is the one with the giant railgun, and it has a twin-linked railgun on it. Um, it has what's called a firebase rule. So if one of the if one of the units that is on that same piece uh, elects not to fire, it can add plus one to the ballistic skill of the gun. And now the gun just works like an emplaced gun, so. It's using a ballistic skill of who's ever shooting it. So, if, like, let's say you put a squad of fire warriors on there, they're ballistic skill three. Um, if one of them doesn't shoot, then the gun becomes ballistic skill four. Okay. Which is most likely the numbers you're going to see happening pretty much every time with this. Now, I mean, uh, well, I guess we'll find out, but like, is it Tau only that can. Uh use it so if if somebody comes and extricates them off of that can it be taken over Just something it, something to ponder I guess it'd be more interesting to know well how many people will be proxying because it's sold out Uh, it's interesting. I mean, the new Tau stuff looks cool. Uh, I do enjoy the a the aesthetic of it. Uh, I mean, as a painter, you, you always have this shiny syndrome. You want to paint all the new stuff. I mean, uh, just recently, Forge World Group's released a new Castigator Titan. And this one's actually a Titan killer, so it's like, oh, I just bought my Titan, now I'm going to want to buy a new one. All right. Well, it looks like Casey's got lost to the warp. While we try to get him back, let me show you what I'm working on. This is a Black Lotus, or a Lotus Warrior from Wrath of Kings, Shell Han. Um, all, all the miniatures pretty much are like, are, they're scantily clad females. But yeah, I'm just doing uh, red, and then I'm using a little bit of Hawk Turquoise with red for my shades. Something that... Oh, there he is. Yeah, so we're uh, we're going mobile now. <laughs> did did the warp get you? You know this computer. It's it's a piece of work. <laughs> so, did you buy? Were you able to get one of those kits? Uh, you know, I actually didn't try. Really, I'm not a. I really want to see what the codex does first. Well, I mean, it's a kit of terrain, so, I mean, you can always proxy it, right? I think so. And, I mean, that's that's what we see a lot of people doing with the uh, 
with some of the other stuff, like the uh, oh, the shield generator. Oh. Yes, the void shield generator. So that's, and I think that that's kind of what you're going to see here as well. Well, yeah, I mean, because you can't get them anymore, and if well, if you do get it, if you do see the kit, it's going to be an expensive eBay item. So, well, yeah, I'm not really interested in the kit because, again, it, it plays to the way that I don't enjoy playing Tau, which is uh, playing them as a gun line. And, I mean, I know some other people might enjoy that, but it's just not the way I like playing them. And so I think the ghost kill is actually um, a lot more along the lines of what I'm interested in playing. Now, so, now um, the, the gun emplacement, is it, is it like all the other battlefield terrains? It, it's just whoever, whoever, whoever's on it owns it? Whoever is on it owns it, as far as I can tell that one. Now, um, there are a few other pieces of terrain there. The, uh, uh, there's basically like a, like a cover segment. It's that piece with all the, you know, GW the seems to have, yeah, the, there's the drone controller. And so the Tau, it has to be owned by the Tau player. Um, at least you get four drones of whatever type you desire, and they pop off, and it says it follows the same as uh, when drones leave a vehicle. So essentially, they'll pop off and they'll form their own unit. Okay. So I could see this being popular, uh, you know, people taking four marker light drones. And then basically attaching like a like a commander to it, you know. So the, then the commander goes around and turns the the marker light drones ballistic skill five, and he goes running around, and that and that keeps a few of your other slots free. And then the last one, essentially, it works. It provides the tower with cover or, you know, anybody behind it cover. But for every successful cover save that they make, you roll a dice. And on the roll of a six, uh, that cover save actually reflects the shot back at whoever shot it. <laughs> so, I mean, let's say you just shoot them with some bolters. And so, and if the Tau player rolls a six, then that means that um, a strength four AP5 shot is coming back at the Marine who shot it which I think is kind of hilarious. It won't do much, but it just gives it a little bit of that, you know, fluffy narrative feel to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more rules like that coming out lately. It's kind of like adding more dice rolls to the game. Yeah, and either people like that or they hate it. What side of that are you on, Alan? I, uh, if it slows down the game, I don't like it. I mean, uh, narrative. I could see. Okay, yeah, narrative. Narrative is always fun, but if you're just doing out of out of turn rolls and just slows it down. Yeah, and I'm generally of the same opinion. Um, if you're slowing down the game, I don't really support that. Even if you have some cool, interesting rules going on. I just don't like it. The standard, like, I'm not a huge fan of the new psychic phase. Like, I know it cleans up a few things, but it just takes so much longer in the game. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Uh, we've seen uh, a new commander, like a uh, the, the commander you? stats. No, no, no. Uh, the crisis suit commander. Okay. So he's, it's the same stats that we've seen before, you know, with 
he's basically a crisis suit with a couple extra wounds, a couple extra attacks, that sort of thing. However, he's able to take uh, a cold star suit. And that's in the fluff, right? Yes. Uh, the cold star suit was mentioned or was mentioned back in the previous codis, codex. And basically, all that was was a crisis suit that was uh, designed for uh, extravehicular activities or fighting in space. And it was just kind of like a throwaway paragraph. We shall fight in the shade. <laughs> And so now we're actually seeing it. The interesting thing is it actually turns the commander into a flying monstrous creature. <laughs> yeah, now he's like, yay! Except he doesn't have fear and smash and all the stuff that actually makes flying monstrous creatures any good. So what, uh, I mean, what part of fly flying monstrous creature does he get? Uh, basically, he gets to move like a flying monstrous creature, <laughs> and I suppose he gets moved through move through cover. So, you know, he can uh, he can choose to you know glide or swoop. So, um, really, just giving him some extra mobility, which is nice. But it forces like a a loadout, which they call a a high yield burst cannon. Or, um, or a rapid fire cannon and a missile pod. A missile pod is always nice, but I'm not. We don't know what the burst cannon does. So, if it's just like a a regular burst cannon with like an extra couple of shots, I don't think you'll see many people taking this because a burst cannon doesn't really do you much. But if we have something like a strike six AP four. Maybe assault four or assault six rending. You might see people taking it. You know, something like an auto cannon. You know, then then that actually gets pretty interesting. But we've seen the new suits and they look gorgeous. Well, I know that's the one good thing because the your infantry all look the same. Dude, they look totally different. Okay, so one's got a, a gangster pistol and. The helmet's slightly different. Yeah, exactly. Hey, let's be honest. Marines all look the same for different guns. Oh, yeah. So I'm just kind of following suit. So, yep, we've, we've still got the good old fire warriors, but they can be breachers or strike squads now. And it looks like the strike squad is just kind of the same... Fire Warrior squad that we've always known and loved. So, if you like Fire Warriors, you'll you'll continue to like them. You know, if you don't like them, you won't be impressed. But that's okay. I like Fire Warriors. I do too. They go they go well with uh, incinerators. <laughs> they 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 die well. But uh. But every once in a while, they'll catch a, a whole incinerator and massacre them to the last skin. <laughs> and then we do silver. And those, those guys made it to the end of the game. Right. So, we have, I mean, what are you going to be picking up from Tau? Things in our last codex that I'm a little wary of. Um, ah, shoot, I screwed something up. Um, you know, just jumping in like whole hog. You know, all uh, how they changed the broadsides. I'm really. It's looked amazing. Generally, they are amazing, but it's not the way I like playing. <laughs> so, i.e., winning. Well, I mean, you, you, should, you should at least wait a few days, like uh, last time with the whole missile missile drone debacle. 
Yeah, so I, I think I want to just pick up the codex right now and just kind of see what what they've done. Uh, but if if everything pretty much stays the same, it's just you know what we're seeing now, like, plus the original codex. I'm thinking maybe pick up uh, a ghost kill or two because I think that they're a pretty solid all-rounder unit. They'll they'll work very nice in the midfield, supported by some uh, some, some suits. Uh, I was going to a box of breachers until I saw that you know the kit is fifty dollars now. Yeah. And I, I just can't support that. Is it fifty for ten or for five? Fifty for ten. Yeah, five bucks a model. You know, it's honestly it's in and it's going to be options for carbines or sparkles or that shotgun. So you can be a decent amount of the box. But I already have three squads of fire warriors. So if I find that I just really, really need breachers, I might just go onto eBay. <laughs> and you know, rip, rip the pulse rifles off of off of one squad. Um and then we'll see, like maybe one of those new the new we gotta see what the new cold star is like. Because if that Cold Star is really good, I'm actually thinking about a Forge World kit. They make a couple of uh, of nice Crisis suits with wings on them already. It's the it's the Hazard suits, which I think that those look awesome, and they already have burst cannons built into them. So I could take a Hazard. Oh, looks like we keep losing Casey. So I'm using flat red for the base color, using uh, hot turquoise mixed with the flat red for the shade, and then sunny skin tone with the, the base color for the highlight. Gives her a nice... Uh, Nice transition of colors. And then I'm going to be using chocolate brown for the hair. And while we wait for Casey to come back, uh, right there. Oh, he's gone. All right, uh, we did do uh, Infinity RPG this week. Our local war corps got together with us, and we were able to do a Hangouts version. There's there's four of us all together, and we all live in very separate parts of the state, so we were able to use technology to do our first session. Um, the Kickstarter is over, but I believe you still can get in uh, later with, or right now, with PayPal. Uh, they were unlocked 20 different, 20 or so books. So it's a very good deal for if you're getting in at any level that gives you uh, the PDF books. Uh, first impression of the game. Uh, the beta rules, a little bit lacking because I mean it's beta, it's quick start stuff, just enough to get you, yeah, you're just your feet wet. But yeah, um, didn't have many issues with the, how it played out. A few things that uh, were not very familiar with is the, the use of heat and uh, momentum. Just it's just tools that they have in the system that 
allows the GM or the player to increase their dice rolls or increase the level of difficulty. So it made it, it was a little bit more challenging for us being that we were all in different spots. You could not see the, the pool of tokens. But I think we're going to be able to work our way around that with uh, just like the camera set you can see right now. Just laying it all out on the board. But yeah, I, I was playing the Hawk Islam Assassin. Casey was the uh, Ariadne Dog Warrior. Our friend Austin was the Hexus, the Pano Hexus. And Mike was our GM. Nobody died first round, so that's always a good thing. And hopefully we'll be able to get more into the system that we can actually do maybe a little bit of live stream or something recorded so you guys can see how well the system plays. If you're interested, you can still get the beta. Uh, links are on the Kickstarter page. I believe they're going to be updating it soon. Uh, give it a look. Tell us what, uh, if you're interested in Infinity at all, there's going to be a lot of information in this uh, Kickstarter campaign that lets you dive in deep with all the background stuff. And here we go again. Hey, there he is. All right, I was just talking about the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, tell us what your thoughts were on uh, your first session at, with RPG. Okay, so uh, this was my very first RPG, like ever. So how well I did or didn't do, I, I'm really not sure. You didn't die, so that's always a good thing. Yeah, that was definitely a plus. Um, I had a lot of fun. You know, I got, I got to play a dog warrior. He's a little more uh, reckless of a character. You know, I, I, I did a, a fake Russian accent for a little bit, which my wife absolutely loved. She, uh, <laughs> she actually asked that I, that I do that accent a, a lot more. I, she says in bed, I wasn't going to say that, but. <laughs> If she feels confident with me saying that, then there you go. <laughs> um, but you know, nobody else was doing accents, so I was like, "Oh, it, maybe, maybe this isn't the place for it." But, it was very hard to do a hawk Islam accent that did not sound like a, a this atypical like terrorist. <laughs> like you were from Durka Durkistan or something. Yeah. You know what? You should just go for it. You're among <laughs> friends. Um, no, so the system seems to work really well uh, outside of combat. And inside of combat, it works well, too. Uh, the one thing I'm not too sure about is, like, the heat system. Yeah, that's, I, I touched on that a little bit. It's, it's one of those mechanics that uh, doesn't work well with uh, our setup. You know, I think it'll work out okay if once we all just kind of get used to using it and keeping track of it. Um, the one, the person that I felt bad for was was our GM. You know, trying to you know balance all the you know manage all these different characters plus uh, you know the heat. And maybe that's just again that's one of those things where we need a little more practice with it. And, and I'm willing to concede that. But uh, the nice thing is, you know, he does allow you to do some kind of some fun stuff. Uh, you know, there's there's kind of the generic things where you just add an extra die roll on, but you're also able to use it to, to do things like knock people out. Yeah, that, that, I mean, yeah, it's the, the rule, it's kick, or quick start rule, so 
there's a lot of stuff that's like, oh, well, how do we do this? Well, there's no rules for it. You know, and, and in general, I'm also I'm okay with playing it like that. You know, saying like, well, we don't really know, but instead of stopping the game and saying, I guess we can't do this, or let's not even try, I'd like the idea of saying, well, let's let's try this, or you know, we'll we'll just do it this way, and we're all okay with that. Because I think generally we have a decent group of people who are kind of okay and you know just kind of want to have a good time with it. Yeah, I mean, you're using your imagination, so you shouldn't let that stop you if you if there is something that comes up. Yeah, you know, the other thing is like this is a group endeavor, you know. So the the point of it is to have fun as a group, not you know, is the GM out to kill us or is it? us here to you know are we here to stoke our own egos you know we're, we're here to play a game as a group and so let's let's actually play as a group and you know i did notice you, you were getting into it pardon I, I did notice you were getting into the game you were enjoying it <laughs> Well, you know, we, we did it right. You know, we, we had kind of like a like a long warm-up, you know, where we, we introduced kind of all the rules and we were figuring everything out and, you know, kind of got the plot up and spinning. And then we just kind of ended it with a cool combat. Or at least a fun combat. <laughs> where we really weren't sure what was going on. All we knew was that people were shooting at us and we didn't we didn't take well to that. So, uh, Austin started going crazy with the stun gun, which in close range is a little OP, if you ask me. Well, that's what, that's what it's meant for. I suppose so. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I pounced on guys and started, you know, doing what you would expect a, a angry giant wolf to do. Uh, you just want to stab happy on that poor guy on the ground. <laughs> it was a little disturbing. Well, I, I think that was the lack of weapon options I had. At, well, the the rules for for weapons, especially close combat weapons, are very interesting. Um, you look at close combat weapons versus other weapons, and you're just like, I don't know why I would ever take use a close combat weapon. I want to have a gun all the time. Um, but our GM, Mike, he did a great job, at least I think. Yeah. He handled it all pretty well. Gave us a nice little um, NPC. Yeah, you want to explain that NPC? Well, yeah, we have a little AI program running with us. Her name is Hannah. And yeah, she's our, our ship, ship pilot and uh, hacker buddy. No, I am our ship pilot, and I'm an amazing pilot. Yeah. Do you want to tell them about the scratches on the, on the side of the ship? It came like that, okay? <laughs> we all agreed. And they didn't calibrate it right either, so it's not my fault. But anyways, Hannah. Yeah, yeah, she's a nice little addition to the team. Yeah, I'm not sure Mike intended on us like using Hannah as much as we did. You know, I mean, because the way he had her set up, I think she was just kind of supposed to be like our little shipboard AI that he could kind of use for a little bit of narration, but we've kind of turned her into our version of like a Cortana. <laughs> when he says she's blue, I'm like, come on. It's all Cortana. Just blue hair. I, I actually, it, it was funny that he said blue hair because I immediately started thinking about like my dactyl. I'm like, perfect. I know exactly what she looks like. <laughs> Yeah, how did the Kickstarter end up? So the Kickstarter ended. Um, you know, obviously it, it funded successfully. So 
but I mean, it was successful within like its first hour or so. Uh, they ended, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in pounds so I don't have to convert anything. Uh, they ended, I believe, at three hundred and forty-five. No, three hundred forty-nine thousand pounds. Yeah, it's like almost a half a million. Yes. And so what that did for for everyone was is now depending on your backer level, uh, this unlocked. If you count the core rule book and the uh, I'm like their little quick start guide. Over 2,500 pages of, of rules and fluff in 22 different in 22 separate books. Nice. Yeah, so I remember when I first looked at that Kickstarter, I was fairly sure I'm like, you are never going to like get your money out of this. However, I was wrong. Like, it turned out that this was really a great deal for people. I mean, especially if you got some kind of option that would allow you to um, you know, pick up all of the PDFs as they were becoming unlocked. And so we saw a lot of interesting things get unlocked. We saw, uh, you know, books for all the specific factions. You know, so Hawk Islam got their own, Ariadna got their own, Eugene got their own, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but then we also saw we had a couple of campaign books that got unlocked. We had a book dedicated solely to tags. That was unlocked a book all just about like the starships in infinity i think that's gonna be cool. um yeah one that i saw that you know got right unlocked right at the very end which i was really excited about was uh the technology of infinity so it's it's all about just like little gadgets and gizmos and and breakdowns of weapons and so that seems like one that you'll that you'll get to use a lot, you know, as you're coming up with like unique weapons and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, and then just like some breakdowns of like different planets and stuff like that. So, um, I think the the nice thing was is you know they also had quite a bit of like dice and and other things set up throughout the Kickstarter. So, if you if you're just into it for RPGs you got a lot of RPG out of it. If you're there for the infinity fluff, you're going to get a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you're there for the miniatures, they had a great set of miniatures. You know, if they had custom dice. So honestly, like as long as you're into infinity, I think that there was something there for everybody, which was nice. And I think going forward, um, you know, Corvus Billy has not really done much with their story or moved it forward. I'm not sure that's how interested they're really uh, they really are in doing that. Granted, I'm not sure how interested any game company is is in moving forward their fluff. You know, some do it better than others, but I think that this is where you're going to see a lot of the Infinity fluff finally coming to light. I agree. It's going to be, uh, we're going to see some stuff that answering a few questions, just seeing a, more of what the whole Infinity Universe is like. Yep, we're going to get to see, you know, kind of what starships look like, which is something we would never see in a miniatures game. Just because, you know, why ever talk about spaceships? You know, we're going to get to understand, like, how different, you know, like, how the society is. Uh, you know, how do their guns work? You know, basically, we're going to have to, like, start... Gutierrez is going to have to start, like, answering a lot of questions for Modifius very soon. Or he already has. I've, yes, they've been working very extensively with him, but I'm fairly sure that they haven't actually written most of this stuff yet. Or, or he just has his own little zip drive. He's like, all right, here it is. You know, I hope that's the way it is. Just because, I mean, the man's been keeping it all up in his head for so long. Uh, and, you know, and 
Corvus Billy keeps him busy. So I don't know how much time he's had to actually translate that into something physical. So I hope that he's he's actually fleshed it all out. Well, maybe but it's Bird, out there somewhere. Hopefully Chris Birch bribed him with a nice tie. <laughs> a nice bow tie. Ooh. There you go. That'll that'll get him interested. So yeah, and I, I believe we're gonna start seeing uh, the first book's coming out in December, or at least PDFs. So what they've said that they're going to do is uh, is start releasing, like, basically uh, PDF, like beta versions of all the PDFs out so people can kind of, like, proofread them, ask questions, and, you know, bang on them a little bit before they, they actually make it out and they go live. So, and then we'll start seeing a lot of the follow-on books start coming along in the new year, like around February time frame. So, we'll have lots to do for Christmas. <laughs> for lots of reading to do, at least. It'll be fun. Yeah. So what were your thoughts on it? I mean, you've you've played other RPGs. I haven't. So what did you think of this RPG? I liked it. Uh, I like the set of rules. It's nice and simple. Uh, uh, it's simple, but it has depth. So it's easy to learn, but uh, hard to master type of thing. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, we'll... we'll get a lot of work out of it. Uh, some things I'm looking forward to is like how how they're going to do hacking. Because in, in some uh, cyberpunk books, that's a whole chapter. Yeah, I definitely think uh, I think they're going to come because the quick start guide doesn't cover that at all. They're going to have to do talk quite a bit to that. No, uh, I mean, from our, our one play session, it went pretty well. I do think I, uh, there needs to be uh, a cheat sheet. Yeah, at least a couple of tables of like what your heat and uh, momentum will do for you. I think would be useful. Yeah, and I, uh, I think yeah, it was uh, a few other systems. I think Pathfinder has a cheat sheet for theirs. So, like, if you get uh, if you get a crit or something like that, you can say, "Okay, I'm going to use this." Yeah, There's stuff available, or not just one of those little just. Little minor things. So, uh, one thing Chris did say that they were going to do is they're actually going to have a character builder app built. Yeah. I saw that in the last update. Yeah, they, they've got one already for Conan. Yeah, have you have you seen their like their Conan app? Is it is it nice? I haven't uh, looked into it yet, but um, it's nice to have be able to kind of have something to guide your way uh, through the character building process if you're if you're not familiar with it yeah and it looks like it's gonna have like a nice way to export it to like a PDF so so you'll be able to email it or, or send it out to people <laughs> yeah. well, then, uh, what we found an app. Uh, our GM found an app for game session set. Hopefully, we'll be able to get to try here soon. Yeah, that did look interesting. So, uh, what was it called? Gosh, um, do you remember? No, not off the top of my head. But it, it was it allowed. It pretty much allowed for online communications uh, for. A dungeon session allowed you to allowed you to uh, the GM to 
build the whole dungeon, put monsters down on there, um, and just and allowed you to just kind of come in and uh, wreck face with the dungeon. Yeah, I I'll admit I I don't really get the purpose of that. However, I could see that Mike was uh, he was doing a lot of work as a GM, and so yeah, anything but, that like I mean, if it helps him do his job a little easier, then I am all for helping him out. Well, like our, like our combat phase, I mean, you can explain it uh, where everybody is, but it's easier to show where people are. So if you say, okay, I want to run at the door, and they're like, well, you, okay, you run at the door, but uh, you come up when it's short. <laughs> yeah, and, and especially after, like, two or three rounds of combat, you know, and, and people start going different directions and doing different things, That that's when it was really, when it would be really useful. But yeah, uh, I look forward to uh, to doing to doing our next session of our RPG. Hopefully, none of us dies. Well, that was something I noticed. Like, I was really worried because uh, my guy didn't have any armor, you know, to to soak up damage, and I was really kind of freaking out about that. So I'm like, oh, I need to find some armor. I need to do something. But it seems like it's kind of difficult to do a lot of damage in this game. Right, well, t- uh, yeah, the weapons, weapons in the Kickstarter don't have, or in the Quick Start worlds don't have a lot of punch to them. Yeah, so maybe that's just so you can't like. It's hard to kill the players. But uh, yeah, I was uh. After I got hit with that first shotgun, I kind of cringed. I was like, oh, no, here it comes. And then I kind of looked at my sheet. I was like, oh, that wasn't bad at all. Yeah, well, you, you know, I, I, was, I was health points. Well, yes. But, I mean, when when a shotgun at close range only took off, now granted, we were also just kind of proxying this, these rules and kind of figuring this out on our own. Uh, but when it only did a couple of points of damage, I was like, okay. I'm I'm not too afraid of these guns anymore. I'm I'm because f- you know in Infinity the game is very uh, it's very lethal. Yeah. You take a shot. <laughs> That's about it. Right, and so I had kind of that same mentality for this. So when uh, when I took a shot and I didn't die immediately, I, I was a little emboldened. So, oh, but did you see, uh, speaking of Kickstarters, Super Dungeon Explorer has a new Kickstarter coming up. Yeah, so does uh, Drop Fleet Commander. <laughs> you poor thing. Yeah, well, my I'm running into the, uh, the Zombicide issue with Super Dungeon Explorer. The Zombicide... Uh, they had like their three third se- three seasons, and then they had their Black Plague, and I just had buddies. And I'm just like, I can't play all these boxes of <laughs> Zombicide, and I'm running into that issue too. I've got Super Dungeon Explorer, and I'm like, that's a whole lot of stuff. I do like that they're gonna that they've updated the first box or. All the tiles and all the uh, heroes are being up, updated. Oh and God. now they're about to do it again. Yeah. Like the original tile set. I'm like, oh, I really want the original tile set that's updated for the new rules. I'm like, oh. but, uh, I do like, though, what uh, uh, Drop Fleet Commander is going to be doing for their Kickstarter. They've, they've uh, stated that they're going to have product that's going to be sold at stores only. So it's not going to be Kickstarter exclusive stuff. They're going to have stuff that's... uh, So post campaign, 
after everything is shipped, you can still get stuff at the store. You can immediately go to your store and pick up new items. I think that's the way to do it. I mean, it it is fun like to see all those like exclusives getting unlocked and you know, and feeling like, oh, I'm I'm super special. But for it's, the rest well, of everybody else, it's just kind of not fun. Well, it's what what do you do post campaign? Because like every when you the people that you're reaching to at during the campaign are probably eighty percent of your uh, buying market. And so, like Wrath of Kings here, uh, I've got all the stuff I want for my factions, and I'm doing this league, but there's nothing new for me to buy. And uh, I'll have to wait till next year when they release the next book. And it just, it's such a grinding halt. I'm like, what am I going to do with this game? I mean, if it's, if, if the, if the player base doesn't keep up interest, then uh, stories are going to drop interest. And it just, it's very, very hard to see this post, post Kickstarter campaigns uh, get a lot of traction. Yeah. Uh, you know, Myth had that same problem. Not I, I think a lot of, a lot of them had that problem. It's, it's like, what do you do? Right. And, you know, to all the other people, because a lot of your player base, it's like, hooray, I just bought 50 million of every kind of ship that I will ever, or, you know, of every kind of model I ever need. Well, I have no reason to ever buy anything of the, from this game again. Yeah. So... I, I like it. I, I really like that they're going there. And so, you know, it's actually been kind of interesting to see how game companies have evolved, you know, and their use of Kickstarter has evolved, you mm -hmm. know? Well, like, uh, going back to Zombicide, Zombicide always felt more like it was a pre-sale. Uh, a lot of, uh, Cool mini or not stuff. It's like, oh, all right, you guys have all. It's a short run campaign. You guys seem to pretty much have everything ready for this. You just want to just need buyers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Simon has definitely been accused of that in the past, and not without cause. Oh, it's interesting stuff to think about. But yes, I will be having to give up some money for at least drop drop fleet. Yeah, again, I'm not totally sold on it. Well, we'll see. Um, Firestorm Armada is out there, which has had a bit of a jump on them. No, so I mean, we'll you see. haven't picked up a uh, Halo fleet yet. I haven't. I haven't. Well, there's there's only so much time that I have, <laughs> and and I wish that I had an indefinite amount of time, but I don't. Time and money, two things you don't have enough of. Yeah. So. So I'll I'll get my infinity guys done. I'll get my tau guys done, and I'll dream of everything else. So, well, that's it for me tonight, Alan. All right. Yep. I think we'll end on that somber note. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> sorry to be sorry to end it on such a downer there. Uh, all right. So let's leave this out to you guys. Um, did you get into the Kickstarter for Infinity? What are you What are you most looking forward to? Uh, are you getting into Tau? Are you picking up Tau? Do you hate Tau? Just want to see him burn? 
uh, let us know in the comments below. We really look forward to uh, seeing what you guys have to say. Um, like this video, share it with your friends, comment to see more. We'll be back next week. So, uh, Casey, anything else? Nope, just as always, if there's ever anything you guys want to see us cover or uh, talk about on the show, just send us an email at theatomicsalt at gmail.com. This has been The Atomic Salt, and we've just blown your mind. Have a good night, folks. See you next week.